Yeah. So uh, thank thanks Luther for inviting me here. So uh so uh Luther, me, King Ming, we used to be colleagues at uh SP Digital. So uh anybody know what SP Digital does? Maybe I just sell a bit off. <laughs> so so I'm I'm a software engineer and and uh, at SP Digital. So what we do is we provide what are uh, energy tech solutions? Is it? Oh, I forgot the, the, the tagline already. Yeah. Uh, specifically, my, my site, what we do is uh, whatever you see today on the SP Utilities app, uh, if you want to open and close your utilities account, look at our consumption, uh, we, we, we are basically building the websites plus the, all the backend systems to do with that. We also support internal businesses. For example, let's say um, uh, automation. Today, the meter readers, technicians, they are doing very, very manual work, pen and paper to figure out, let's say, what are the meters that needs to be re repaired and things like that. So we harvest, we ingest all the data and we figure out and uh, through use of various technologies, AI, machine learning, to figure out what are the things that needs to be prioritized and things like that. So, so we work on all sorts of uh, uh, things that can help digitize, make, to make uh, the SP Group, which is a utilities company, uh, operate better, more efficiently. And at the end of the day, I think it's to save taxpayers money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that's what, like, what I do. Okay, uh, so the topic I'm talking about today is hardline liquid cooling. So anybody here uh, knows what, okay, anybody here has built your own PC before? Oh, good. So is it, uh, is it water cooled hardline? It's air cooled. Air cooled. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So so I also same thing. So I, I have always been building a liquid cool PC. And I my 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 always my always thought my thought was like uh it's easier to maintain, is is quieter. My 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 aim is it needs to be quiet. So I realized that uh after my first few builds, there was one build I tried to go full silent, meaning that not no fans, all hit things. Yeah, and then uh it's okay, but you, you can't go very high end because yeah, so so then I was thinking. We'll, we'll look at cooling actually help do that. Yeah. So, okay. So I will just try to wait. How do I move? Ah, okay. So we all know about traditional uh, uh, cooling, right? You have the CPU or some kind of hardware that's, that's warm or hot. You have a heat sink, which is basically something that conducts it away. And then you have a fan, which tries to cool it down. Basically, the fan tries to uh, bring airflow through the thing yeah, up. So uh, I won't go into details like or oh, whether it's positive, negative, uh, case flow. All these are all those are like uh, beyond the score of this. So it's really it's more about my experience with uh water, water cooling. Okay, so why? Because things like this are very hot, right? So we need to cool all this down. Um, yeah. So traditionally you can put things like that. So this one was on all my examples. I tried this thing. Technically can run without fan. This is the Noctua uh D fourteen. So it's really, really a gigantic piece of uh, aluminum like this. So with this, if you are not gaming, you can actually run without a fan. Yeah, and you can really achieve almost complete silence. So if this one paired with uh, even power supplies that are totally silent, passive, you can actually run an entire computer without any fans. Yeah, but obviously not for gaming. Yeah, so... But, so yeah. Like, how does this actually work? Because yeah, I understand that it needs to have a large surface, but at some point, like the air, like you're just trying to keep the air that between. Yes. The correct. Plate. Correct. So this, this obviously you need to put it in a place where there is adequate airflow. Mm -hmm. uh, and because this is so so huge, right? Uh, um, even without the fan. It uh your you you have you have acceptable temperatures around okay it depends on how acceptable you feel it is around 50, 60, 55 degrees because CPUs mostly can survive up to hundred without automatically shutting down yeah so if you are not gaming it's actually okay obviously it is an experiment you shouldn't be doing that yeah but I'm just saying that with this size of fans right you can actually run without fan it won't shut down it will still run because uh, it can maintain around fifty plus sixty degrees yeah obviously not 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 if you try to game yeah. So I don't know if you answer that question. Yeah. So what's the cost of this one? <laughs> uh, not twice today cost around 180, 90. I got this I maybe very long, 12 years ago. So just to just in case, uh so not twice a company that, that I think they make one of the best uh hit things. They are expensive because they are really well made. And it, they last forever in a sense that even over the gen different generations, uh, your CPU socket, all this might change, right? All you need to do is email them, say that I have a new CPU socket uh, and which what kind of CPU is using. They will mail you the, the bracket for it. 
So in a way, it's like lifetime. You can use it for years. I used it, I've been using this for more than 10 years, over like three or four PC builds. Uh, just curious, do you need yeah. to like clean your them? Because I know there's yeah. a bad flow, but yes, on the dust. you need to clean. So there is definitely maintenance. Even though it's so-called fanless, uh, there will, it will still collect dust. Yeah, over time. Obviously, if you're a fan, you will see the fan marks there, then you see the maintenance. Uh, ultimately, it's still there, there's still maintenance. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah. Yes. Like on the photo, we show fans so that we can see. Yeah. Can you put the cage around this? Or yeah, yeah, you can. You can. Again, again, I'm not uh, not saying that we should run fanless. I'm just saying that it's, uh, it is possible. I haven't done enough uh, experiments that you can issue on fanless, but, but yeah. So, but this is, uh, this is just to show, but it is it usually is in, in the case. Uh, this is just to illustrate uh, in case for the rest who uh, other parts of the PC uh, today, today are the same, whether it's graphic cards or what is always heatsink fan. Even today, your NVMe SSDs also has a mini heatsink and fan. So, yes, so everything now has, a, your, even your memory sticks now today have a heatsink heat and a fan. So pretty much now everything is getting hotter because they're getting smaller and faster. Yeah. Okay, so water cooling. Right. So what's the concept? Uh the the, the heat sink is replaced with a water, what we call a water block. So it's actually just a metallic uh, aluminum met some kind of metal block that conducts heat away. And then the rest is actually like any other traditional heat exchange. So what cold water comes in, it goes out, the water is being uh, passed through a radiator, and then the radiator with its, with its uh, large surface area will, will try to cool it down. Obviously, you can put fans on it so that it can be faster. And you need a pump also to actually circulate the, 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 the coolant. Yeah, Coolant here can be, can be a lot of things. Some people say that water works, but obviously water over time, they will, there will be algae growth and things like that. So people will use something called uh, some kind of coolant. So uh, they usually, what does water cooling companies, they sell it. You just pour it in, it will inhibit the growth of algae and basically try to clean th things along the way. So some people claim that you can just run with pure distilled water. It works for some people, it works. It, it depends on where you are in the, in, in, in the world. Certain places, maybe it's okay. Maybe our environment is, is even for some countries where even the ambient temperature is low, they also have to put in some other chemicals to make sure that it doesn't freeze like this. Yeah, so it, it depends on, on where you are. Yeah, so in case, uh, if you, in case you wonder what is a water block, right? it, it, it looks like a mini heat sink. So it's, this is the cheapest that you can find. So you have a, 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 a copper plate and then there's a lot of fins. It, it basically tries to mimic what a heat sink would does or we would do. But in this case, it passes water through. So water in, water out. So that, 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 that's how water cooling works to, to cool this uh, uh, water block or quite cold plate. So this is the most rudimentary one. Obviously, today you can buy really nice machine ones, very, very fancy. They have really, really tiny fins, different channels that forces the water through. So there's, there's an art to the design of this. They force it through tiny fins that can make the pressure higher and things like that. So there's, there's a lot of science that they, they went into designing modern uh, uh, water blocks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, next thing is what case and form factor if you want to do cooling, because if you want to do water cooling, then you, you can't, okay, today you can pretty much buy any, any kind of case you want. Yeah, but I think traditionally in the, in the past, there are some, uh, okay, you still need to buy and accommodate. So I'll, I'll cover later on what do you need to figure out to, to see what fits based on how much components you have, what is the width or size of the radiator you have. Then you have to really go and consider what is the size of your casing. So you can also, you can go all the way, this really, really fancy kinds where these are called like a medium or small form factors. They are really custom. If you are really into this kind of thing, you can buy cases. These are, these are not full custom, meaning that it's still off the shelf. They are those really, really hardcore ones. They, they, machine, they machine their own cases. But this one you can buy off the shelf, but uh, it involves a lot of uh, manual fixing. So, yep. Question, yes. The case alone is $700. Just the case without any components, just the case itself. Yeah. So, uh, okay, along the way, I will cover, then you can, you can feel free to ask me the prices. Anyway, what I remember is from two years ago. So I built mine during COVID, which is 
probably might be higher than, than now. Yeah. Um, okay, next is, uh, you can also go, uh, they call it SSS, SFF, small form factor. So traditional small form factor is, because it's really so small, people might say that, maybe might think hey, you, can't, you can't fit any more water commerce in. It's really so small, but apparently people have done it. Even for this kind, which is so small, you can see the mouse for comparison. They are able to fit in water cooling for both the GPU and the CPU. So yeah, people have done amazing things with it. Yeah, just a quick question. Yes. What is the next temperature after this kind of process? What is the next temperature that you? Yes. So. Yes. So good question. I will call that later. So it really depends on what you are willing to. It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a balance. If you are using running a large big case, you can afford more fans, more radiators. You can put. You can get the temperature very low. I will call that later. If you are something like that, right? It's very tight. Definitely, therefore, it will be will be worse. The 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 the. the there's only one radiator here. But it, it depends on what you're going for. For example, so let's say you're, you want to go for uh, uh, quiet, you want it to be small. Uh, you can say that I, oh, I'm okay for this to run at a, a load of, let's say, 80 degrees. Maybe for someone who's going for cool and quiet, they may not uh, accept that. So it really depends on what you're aiming for. For some folks, they want the size. Yeah, definitely if you, you air cool this, you won't, you won't be able to fit high confidence in. But if you water cool it, you barely... Uh, uh, allows for it. So it depends on what you what you're looking for. So if you're looking for uh, like for this, maybe they are designing this for cat and maybe uh video video editing, maybe not so much for gaming. And then uh people actually underclock or limit the vo vo uh, voltage limit the, the their hardware so that they know that it it can perform better, but they make it more efficient by maybe limiting the 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 power consumption to a certain voltage, and then you know that the potential won't won't exceed that. So again, that's another whole science of uh, what they call today uh, and underclocking. Technically, overclocking today is okay, it's a bit like overclocking, but I, I won't go with that. So that, that's, that's how you can actually optimize, yeah. optimize it. So, so this one is the GPU, so you, you basically remove the, the, the start of the GPU card and then you plug yes. this one. Yes, I'll, I'll cover that and what I did. So this, this, this is off the internet, this is not, this is not mine, this is off the internet. So yes, uh, today they sell GPUs already pre- uh, comes with the water block, okay. or you can buy and then you remove and you buy a separate block and put on it. Yeah, you can. Okay, so this is the more traditional one. This is what you can buy off the shelf. Yeah, so I think this is after shop. So if you today because they know there's a demand for uh uh machines uh, like 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 this right, you can buy it off the shelf. They pre-build it for you and then it's just shipped to your house like any other Dell computer. They will ship the house. Yeah. So if you want some want a water cool PC but you're not you you don't want to Get your hands dirty, you can actually buy all the shelf today. Yeah. So I end up going with a more traditional uh PC power case like this. So to, to answer a question earlier, like I, I wanted to uh it to be running cool and uh, near silent. So definitely I need something bigger, I need more space, I need more radius and fans. Yeah. Uh by the way, this is uh I think it's Fanatec uh Evo X, if you are curious. Oh, okay, how much it costs? This case, I think it costs $300. Yeah. I think modern case nowadays, uh, there is no hardware that can fit that size. Yes, because today there is pretty much no need for this. Yeah, yeah, that's true. yeah so there is a front I always thought, but this whole thing can be removed. It's, it's just a, a face plate, but behind it's just a fan for, for fans. Yeah, so... If you again, this is not mine, but uh, this is what it is fully installed. This is something how it looks like, yeah. So although it looks quite plain, it can look quite cool when it's fully loaded, yeah. Okay, so the question is, if you have decided that you want to do water cooling, whether to go half hard line or soft tubing. So the re internet's recommendation is, is you go soft tubing. Soft tubing is pretty much the garden hose that you are that you are familiar <laughs> with. So the good thing is. Uh, which I will I will talk later. The, the, uh, the, the pain of hard line is everything doesn't move. So the, the tol tolerances are very are, are quite high. Any kink or any uh, anything that's not aligned, there will be leaks. So soft is really just a tube. You're calling tube one end to another, not, usually nothing will go wrong. For hard line is it looks nice, but you really have to figure out how do you measure it to be precise. Because you can imagine. You are just, you are being, I, I want this to connect to this. How do you even make that happen? Do you, how do you measure that to cut it to the correct length? How do you uh, 
uh, the worst is uh, there are different types of tubing, which I will think I will color, help cover. So there's a few types, which is uh, they call it uh, the, the rubber tubing here. So rubber is the easiest. So the, what they recommend for, for starters. Yeah. Then you have uh, acrylic, PDG, various, various types of plastics. You can go glass if you are if you know how to bend glass. Yeah. Uh, you can go other exotic stuff like um, um, copper uh, and even uh, carbon fiber. Yeah, for some folks. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I went with copper, so that I will show. So, um, so the thing is, you need to bend things. So you have to think about how do you bend things. If you are going for glass, how are you going to bend glass? Yeah, there are people who can bend glass at home. You have to, there are, there are guides on this, but it's really, really complex. You can bend copper also, but today they actually sell pre-bent copper, which I, I, will, I will show. So they are pre-bent in 45 angle degrees, or then so you need to bend yourself. Yeah. <laughs> But for, for acrylic on plastic, you have to bend yourself. And it's actually not that complex. It's really just a heat gun, which is pretty much a head dryer. <laughs> and then you just put it on top and then you just want, wait until it's softer and then you bend it. So uh, obviously there's more to that. You have to put inserts in. So if not, if it's a hollow tube, the moment you bend, it just collapse, right? So they will put rubber inserts in to, to do this. So again, there's an art and science to all those, but I won't, I won't cover that. So recommendation is if you are totally new and you want to try it, you can go for rubber tube. If you have want to be, if you want to experience or have uh, uh try more things, you can try uh, uh acrylic or plastics. Yeah. Oh, okay. Price. Uh, rubber tubes is cheap. I think three meters of rubber tube. Okay, obviously it's not normal rubber tube because rubber tubes, normal rubber tubes will will uh will degrade over time. So uh, those use of water cleaning because water runs, uh, uh, I think they sell slightly higher quality ones. So I think a three meter tube is like twelve dollars. Uh, plastics and acrylics, I think they sell in one meter length, twelve fifteen dollars. But a lot of things actually I saw online, you import from Alibaba or this is 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 cheaper. If you try to buy locally in Singapore, it's a lot more expensive. Yeah. Okay. So okay, the next part is then how does this actually connect to that to that uh to that um uh water block or thing that 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 we are talking about? So there's this thing called fitting. I always wondered how they connect. So this is called a fitting. So fitting means you can imagine there are two parts. The bottom part is the one that actually screws on to a radiator or a uh a, 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 the 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 water block. So you can see there are two rubber seals. So what you have cut to length that tube, you just force it in the 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 the, the rubber tube screw so-called provide a seal there's outer ring so when you uh when you screw on the outer ring it sort of locks it into tightens it into place so that's it uh therefore by 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 sque squeezing the rubber tubes to into the metal you you achieve a seal yeah so that's that's how how you connect things to parts to different parts so they they call this uh uh fit fittings yeah there are different types because if you are using this is for hard tubes, things like copper or, or acrylic. So that design is for rubber tubes. So I, I think I think you can guess it looks more like a garden hose kind of uh, variety. So that is actually for rubber tubes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think the next part is, which is the planning part. So this is a rough thing diagram of uh what you have to consider in uh, uh planning uh uh I would they call it a cooling loop. So before, maybe I go one page next. Okay, in a simple design, what these are the minimally, minimally these are the things you need, right? Uh, let's say, okay, this is, this is when in the past where two GPUs are still popular. So you definitely need radiators. Radiators are the one that actually uh, water goes through them and then they dissipate the heat. You need uh, a reservoir. So, okay, reservoir is, I, uh, res why, why reservoir is needed? Because if it's just a, uh, Today they sell closed loop coolers, so it's just a radiator, uh, the a, 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 a tube, and then it's just a a cope, uh, the the water block, and then you connect it to the CPU. So technically, then you are where's the reservoir? So actually, it's no reservoir because it's closed loop. But however, if you are building yourself, you you wouldn't be able to fill it up to the brim without having a reservoir there to 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 basically store water. Yeah, you you can do without it, but I think it will be a challenge too. Uh, to to fill everything to fill the entire loop because your loop is of different heights. How will you get the air out and make sure that the entire thing is fully filled up? It's, it's really difficult. So, 
uh, you need a reservoir. And I think for aesthetic reasons, people put reservoir because it looks cool. Yeah, so that's the reservoir. You definitely need a pump. And then I think the rest are, yeah, I think, I think that's about it. Yeah. So, so going back to this, then there are more things, which is, okay, these are more like serial apparel. Because if you look at uh, 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 any, any uh, okay, for GPU in case, in this sense, there's an in, there's an out. So do I go in and out there or do I go in and out there? So again, again this, that's, that's more of design and uh, choice. So uh, they talk about fittings. How do you bend it? Because you can go 90 degrees, you can be fancy, you can go. So all this, you have to really consider uh, the, 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 the design. Uh, the reservoir, uh, drain valve. So uh, there is maintenance. So things like um, maintenance can be for, for, the, for, the, for different reasons. For example, um, the, the coolant, technically they, they rec the recommended uh, by the manufacturer that manufacturer is that you need to change the, the water out maybe once every two years yeah to make sure that there's nothing growing inside. Uh, but even if uh, other things, for example, your GPU suddenly dies, right? How do you remove it and then send it for IMA or servicing? So you, you can't, if you just plug it, water will just burst out, right? So you need a drain valve. So the drain valve is for you. It is located at the lowest part of the of your of your build. You, it is basically just a tap. I mean, there can be very fancy designs like push pull uh valves and stuff like that, but it's basically just a tap. So the idea is you if you need to drain it, you just open it and then you drain it. But the thing is, uh, again, even if you open it, there are high low parts. You won't be able to drain everything. So you still have to do some kind of bleeding where through somewhere on top again part of design pump air in to get force all the water out. So that's, that's part of maintenance. So uh, so if any of you if you are curious that yes, there is maintenance involved, but um, I think it's it's not that bad. For, for mine, I think I, I did, I drain it once. It wasn't, it's not that difficult. So if you design it properly, you just drain it and then do any maintenance you want um, and fill the water back. Yeah. So, uh, so you can see the lines they complain here. Like, uh, you need to consider things like if it's the run is too long, will it sag? Uh, um, uh, yeah, is it rigid or this? So, okay, yeah. So, so these are all the, the different different constitutions. So, I will try to cover later once I go into the photos. Okay. So next, let me just go in. Because I didn't prepare enough slides, <laughs> but I will cover. Photos. Yeah. Okay. So uh this is the case. This is this was the planning that I did <laughs> for, for for it. So uh I have to consider red parts are the radiators, where the radiators fit. So I again I don't have a cat diagram. Uh I don't have a cat uh, uh, uh file for this. So I have to really do a lot of guesswork. Right, but uh, I will I will scale the image to the correct dimensions. <laughs> Again, all this is very hackish. I will scale it to the correct dimensions of, of what I know the case is, uh, and then fill in the gaps. So in, in Photoshop, make it one to one. So then okay, then I will I will draw out. I know this is the radius I'm gonna buy. What is the length? Does it fit? So the red one, red parts are radiators, blue parts are the fans. So again, I look up the fan spec, how long is the fan? Okay, those are those are uh fixed. Meaning that if your radiator supports three fans, the holes are, the, are really drilled to it. So the, those, those are the things we don't need to worry. The thing that we worry is uh, connecting all these things together. So the pipe running from there to there, how long does it have to be? So uh, so in, in short, what, what, what I, I, I do is I, I try not to bend stuff because that would, be, that would make it really, really hard because you connect one part and then you bend. How much do you know or when to bend? So for mine is easier. I try not to do any bends. I buy pre-bent uh, stuff. So you uh you cut one side to length, you fit it the other side, then so now you just need to worry about one side. I don't know if I, it's, a, it's a good explanation. So end of the day, it, it, it's always the case. Uh cut it first, fit it here. Then later on, uh here you have to sort of eyeball. So I will try to cut not not so much, look at it, try if it's more, cut more. So obviously that's 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 trial and error and things like that. So I actually have to cater and buy more of everything because you do make mistakes. Once you cut it too short, it's it's gone. Yeah, you probably can can reuse it somewhere else if it's shorter. But yeah, that's a lot. Of work. So um, that's the pains of uh, a hard hard line. 
And then the, the thing, all these things like to make them fit nicely, there are definitely uh, uh, the fittings that will actually help, which I will try to cover later. Yeah, so I have to count how many I have to buy and how many, how many like two way, three way fittings, what are the angles. I end up buying like four times. So I bought, bought one batch and try to fit it and realize, like, yeah, I actually need more parts. Buy again, buy again. The whole build, I think, took me like probably six six months. Yeah, because because uh, a lot of sh shipping shipping from 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 Taobao, China, also takes easily two weeks each, and it's, she shipped me the wrong stuff and things like that. So I have to do, do all this. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll roughly go to the part. So this is the water block. Uh, so there's some pictures. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is important. You know, before you, you always see a sticker on heat sinks, uh, fans. People always forget to remove that protective sticker. <laughs> yeah, even OEM companies, they they, they make this mistake. So their yeah, yeah, customers will say, hey, I, 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 why is my CPU overheating? Then when the repair person opens it up, they actually didn't remove the sticker. You still need to apply the case. Yes. So it's the block. It's the RAM. SSD. At that time of this, I think Ryzen 5900X was, I think, was one of the best value for money. Today, obviously, there are better choices, but yeah, it was, it was. Oh, great price. <laughs> uh, let me go back to this. Let me I try to remember things like that. Okay. Uh, this block is, I think it's 280, $280. Uh, memory, I think it's around there. I think per stick is like what, 150? How much RAM? Uh, eight each. I put four pieces, so 32. Yeah. I, I don't need 64 because gaming and most, I, I, very few things in the budget for, unless you're running at tons of virtual machines doing really, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one, I think, I bought a really small one. It's only 500. Uh, uh, 500 uh, gigabytes. Yeah, I think this was like mm. probably 200 plus. Yeah. Okay, CPU. Wow, can't remember the price. I think it was 1002 at the time. Today is a lot cheaper. Yeah, that one that was a time that everything was shortage. People are, are, are robbing uh, other countries. People are delivering CPUs in armored vehicles. That, that, was a, that was a time. Yeah. So today is a lot cheaper. Uh, Motherbond for five hundred dollars, I think. Uh yeah, this is the socket. It's the the SD four sticks of RAM. Again, that time was limited by choices. There's a lot of things that we really because it was I think just after uh one of the phase two of camera. That really a lot of things are limited. Yeah. At the time, I don't limit the overprice. Ah, uh, this is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, the water block for the G GPU. So you can buy your own GPU, remove the, 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 the heat sink, the, the one that comes with it, and then you can buy something like this to, to replace it with. So I actually bought this thinking that I can buy a GPU. So <laughs> for nearly four months, I couldn't get a GPU. I exhausted all my contacts because I, I, I have contacts working with distributors, and then at that time, really nobody can sell a GPU. Yeah, you have to pay like really through the roof, like three, four times the price. Yeah, even distributors themselves are trying to uh, sell sell off without even going through. So pretty much you couldn't get it for, for you couldn't get what you want. So you pretty much, you have to really see what's on the market and then see what fits your budget. So I, I even though I bought this, I, I end up returning it because I couldn't use it because I couldn't get a GPU that, that, that fit this, yeah. Uh, power box. Oh, wait. So this cost around $300 or something. Yeah. Power box, 100 and, 180 something. Yeah. So the people they might say, oh, you, today you need a 100 watt power supply for water thing. No, like you don't actually, you can, there are ways to compute it. Uh, today, efficient power supplies actually, uh, you don't need that. You don't need to use, uh, you don't need to go like really over over the top. It's modular, so you can really have good cable management. Okay, so this is a, a pressure tester. So after you have done out your loop, right, 
the only way to test that it doesn't leak is to uh, connect it to a pressure sensor, pump out the pressure. Because if it doesn't leak air, means it doesn't leak water. <laughs> right. So so uh that's you have unfortunately you have to either you have to buy this uh to, to be able to test your system. And if you since you it might seem like a one-time purchase because you only use it once, right? But each time you do maintenance, you have you should actually test it again. This costs 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see how many bars you can test it. Yeah. But how do you know yeah, yeah. whether it's leaking So if you if you pump it, let's say the, so the recommended, not that uh recommended uh pressure that you it should be uh for, for water is the you pump it to like 0 0.7 or 0 0.7, then you lock it, you hold it there, you put it for overnight. If it doesn't drop, means good, yeah, good. Yeah, if the next day you see oh it dropped, means it is leaking, yeah, then you have to figure out. Where is leaking? That, that's actually the hard part. So, so how to figure out where is leaking, right? You, you, so there are there are a lot of uh, ways. Some people say that yeah, you get you get soapy water, you brush all the connecting parts. If you see bubbling, then you know this thing. But especially this thing, this kind, it, the leak might be very, very, very little. So sometimes even those can't detect. So sometimes you really have to try and error. Like uh, for me, it when I first got it installed, it was it was it was leaking. Then I just remove every part, pull it back again, go ahead and again. I, I didn't go the 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 bubble soap water part uh rock. Yeah. Okay, uh these are additional fittings. This is to mount the uh pump and reservoir. These are the radiators. Yeah, so they look like that. It looks like it looks a lot like aircon or car radiators. So it's just a lot of fins, water goes in, water goes out. Okay, these are the hard tubes that I bought. So they are copper tubes that are uh, pre-chromed uh, into a nice finish. So they look like this. Yeah, so they are pre-bent. One, so, 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 uh, I, I, uh, so let's say I need, I know what's the distance between my, the certain device to that bend, then I would just do a cut there. Then once I fit it, then I'll try to eyeball the other side by cutting bit by bit, by bit, by bit. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, these are fittings. So even for a simple PC, uh, PC, you need to buy color fitting. Fittings are all the connectors. Something connects to something, something that needs to bend, to turn, all these are considered fittings. So I actually bought quite a lot. I also bought spares just in case I, I screw up. Yeah. <laughs> so they look like this. Yeah. So there is a one, the, this is the outer locking uh, uh, ring that locks it in place. The, uh, the part on top is the one that actually connects to the, dev the, the device you want. Then that is the rubber seal. Uh, these are connectors like ninety degree bend. So if you are not bending something, you you have two uh uh, uh pipes. Just you can connect there using that. So that is just this, and you still need to put a fitting onto it. So that's why the fitting multiplies to a lot. So this is just a bend. You still need to put fitting on both ends. Yeah. So, so these are more essential. So if I have a short uh gap or run something instead of putting a tiny short tube, I can buy something like this. Yeah. Uh, this is a temperature sensor. So by having a, a, a gap somewhere, you can actually use this thing that looks like a fitting, but however, the other end actually connects to a temperature sensor. Yeah. So okay. now that's the interesting part. So people might wonder, so how do you know whether it's cool? So you don't really, need to, you, okay, yes, you need to care about your CPU and GPU, but all actually you need to care is what is the coolant running at? If you can cool down a coolant, pretty much everything takes care of itself. Of itself. So, because obviously if your CPU and GPU is running hot, it will heat out the water, the water will be hot, right? So if you can maintain the water temperature to the temperature that you want, pretty much everything takes, takes, uh, takes care for itself. So all you actually need to do is to measure the water temperature. Then if that is within your acceptable range, you don't really need to worry about what CPU or GPU temperature running at. I mean, obviously, if you're overclocking, it takes some time to reach. Yes, correct. To reach equilibrium, then you have to do so. So this one is obviously yeah, you have to wait a while. You can benchmark, you can test it. Yeah. So, so this is very important. Well, the time, the yeah, time sorry. Just, like, you know, more, more yes. Actually, you, how, how do you actually? You okay? So the, the, the pump. Uh, I'll go to the pump. Okay, sorry, uh, I'll I'll come to the question later. Okay. Yeah. So this is the CPU. Thermal grizzly. So that's a that's a paste that came with it. Apply the paste. Again, 
there's a lot of debate how you should apply the face. Is it a dot? Is it a cross? Is it a, I, yeah, nobody can agree on it, but I use the traditional credit card way for it. Yeah, so you smear it with a, with a card. Yeah. Ah, so this is the other side where after you remove the sticker, it's, it's, yeah, it's quite shiny. And then you install it. Yeah. So, okay, if you buy radiuses of, of uh, I mean, radius, they, right, they are actually quite dirty because they are all, you can imagine the welding and stuff that it requires to manufacture it. Yeah, inside is full of metal shavings and dust. You have to rinse it and with, with, with stuff to clear everything out, rinse it a lot of times, pump water through it. So I, have to, I, was, I was trying to clean them up before I install it. Yeah. Okay, these are the fans. So I, I, I have two radiuses, one that can fit two fans, one that can fit three fans. So I have, I have to buy five fans. Yeah, this, am I, am I over? I, okay, I have, yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, what I have, have, have already set up then uh, without any of the, of, the, of the tube runs yet. Uh, yeah, because there was a delay of four months when I was trying to hunt around Singapore to get a credit card. Yeah, so yeah, so a lot of a of this, which end up I, I couldn't use, I have to return this. Okay, the, this is, okay, this is the, the fans that I want to install on the radiator. Okay, this is the pump and reservoir. So today you can buy a two in one. So this is the res the pump is below, the reservoir is on top. So uh, to answer your question earlier, uh, the, this pump technically works like a fan. You can connect the, the, sense, the pump uh, sensor. Uh, one, one sensor tells you the reading. Okay, typically fans today, right? Uh, the, 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 if you connect to your motherboard, you can, you can get two things. Firstly, it powers the fan. Secondly, it tells your motherboard how fast your fan is spinning, right? Uh, uh, yeah, so this, it will tell you how fast the pump is spinning and you can also control the pump speed. So by pairing your temperature, you can, you can say that if the temperature, you can, you can, they call it the fan curve optimization. So if you say that, if I reach this temperature, run the pump at this RPM. Yeah, there, there are software today that actually uh, does this for you. You can just say calibrate. It will, uh, based on a microphone, it, it taps your microphone. It figures out how loud your fans are, how much the temperature, and then it can calibrate this for you today. Yeah, you can do it yourself if you want. Uh, so it depends on uh, what you buy. So if you buy, uh, 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 okay, so this is under, and uh, usually it's, called, it's, it's by your motherboard. So this motherboard, most of them support a uh, fan curve on optimization. Oh, you have to buy the microphone yourself and you have to connect it. Uh, uh, yeah, connect somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Yes, question. So the, 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 yeah, so so because okay, uh, uh I'll go to the quiet part because compared to air cooling, right? You can run the fans at super super low RPM. Okay. Yeah, that's the main main thing. Yeah, typical fans, uh CPU fans are running at 2000 to 3000 RPM. This fans on the radiator, I can run at 500 RPM, 600 RPM. It, it, it is so slow they can see it spinning. Yeah. yeah, it is really there to have some airflow, that's it. Yeah. So yeah. So you said that the is the pump mm. that is controlled by the motherboard, like if, if the temperature is high. But I have trouble understanding that. So if I imagine, like you know, I have this water in some system, mm. and there's some radiator, and there's something that produces heat. So mm. the water just moves around faster. How is that gonna make anything colder? Uh, the if the water moves around faster, how it makes you it? Uh, okay, I don't know the the science behind that, but if you push water uh fast enough through the the whole system, right? Uh, if I'm not wrong, that's what they would say. It it gets cooled down faster. Are you sure that all the water go to the on the top of the CPU, then it gets very warm. Yeah. 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 I yes, correct, correct. Yeah, so that, that it's not in, in, in that sense. In fact, in fact, there are a lot of things in water cooling that doesn't seem to make sense. Like people that ask, 
which one co should come first? If I CPU is hotter and then GPU is, or GPU is hotter, CPU should it should my should my look go through the CPU first, then the GPU will it affect? So there has been tons of uh experiment and science into that. Apparently, it doesn't matter. Yeah, as long the the the, the loops temperature is is what you want. It's the radiators you a huge amount of surface, right? Yeah, in a, in a way. So, so there, there's really a lot of debate and science in this. Again, it goes into a uh, 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 science of, uh, I forgot the science behind, what's the science for, for water? Um, yeah. Yes, yeah, uh, at least it's, it's, there's a lot of science to it. Like, like I would say, some of them doesn't, it's not very intuitive, but apparently it works. So, yeah. So I think, I think that's another topic uh, for <laughs> the, why, why it works and how well it works based on this. Yeah. Okay, so temperature sensor which header the motherboard to So today today's motherboard has a, a temperature sensor for water cooling. The, the modern motherboard today. Yeah. So there's a they call it like, like PW something, then you can connect with that. Yeah. So this is the I think this is a, a something aerator to, to keep it to prevent the bubbles from forming. Okay, this is the GPU that I'm buying. It's not exactly the one I want, but it's the only one that can get it. This is $2,500. Uh, 380 GTX, RTX, RTX 380. At the time it was top of the line. There's no TI out yet. There's no, there is 390, there's 390, but you have to pay, you have to be prepared to pay almost 4,000 for it. Yeah. <laughs> This is at the price of 1490 now. Yeah. <laughs> that, that time was really nowhere you can find it. This is the cheapest I could find. Yeah. Even after I buy it, uh, the, the, the shop owner was telling me, if you buy it now, you will still earn money if you sell it at the end of the year, which really, it, it went, it, it peaked at almost 3200 something, $300 dollars, yeah. So this one is kind of This one, it ever has, has this, thing, this thing to detect any leakage. If there's any leakage, it knows it will shut everything down. Yeah, so they have metal tracers that will be back with the cage. Uh, it's the back. Ah, because I want to mount it very fancy. I want to mount it horizontally, so you have to extend your PCIe uh, 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 this extender to extend it. Yeah. Uh, this is mounted. I already put in some fittings here, 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 here. So this is where I try to measure it. So one, some of the tricks I tried online is you get a... Uh, a wire, those they call it the, the wire cleaner, the pipe cleaner, because they can bend quite well. Mm -hmm. So you use that and try to uh, measure, because you can cut them to length, you can try bending it, and then you use that as a template to cut your tubes. Yeah. Is that, how do you cut yes. Copper? Is it like some kind of soap? Yes. So how do you cut copper tubes, right? <laughs> uh, so if you have worked with, uh, this is a, exactly the same thing that plumbers use to cut copper, copper tubes. So if you have done, uh, have your aircon installation done, they are, they are using this, this same thing to cut. So uh, it looks like this. You, um, do I have it somewhere? I think I have it in the later, later slide. Okay, uh, so this, uh, this is just the radiator with the uh, fittings installed, with the fan installed. So these are ready for connect, connecting. Uh, this is a digital sensor, display sensor. Uh, so this, Later, I'll show the water, uh, when water runs through, it displays both the temperature, the, the, the rate of the water flow, everything is displayed here. This is another fitting. So these are weird fittings that I have to compensate. So there are certain parts where these two things doesn't align. This thing actually swivels upon a point. So you can actually have two things, and then you have, instead of trying to figure out how to align them, you, you get this, and then it will do the offset for you. Because this thing can, can swivel with it. So there are all these small parts that can help you achieve that. that uh, alignment, yeah. Okay, this, so, yeah. So you can see, I I, I already installed certain parts already. So this is connected. Yeah, uh, those are still have to open. Ah, so you have this device. You 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 press this thing. This is a metal blade. Yeah, this is a roller. So behind that is uh is a is a screw that you can turn. It will put it will put pressure onto the this, and then you just keep rotating your uh metal your your copper tube. So you will do a, a small groove. So you tighten it a bit, do one more round, tighten it a bit, do one more round. You will, eventually you will, you will cut through. Yeah. So you not pressure. No. Yeah. I mean, you can buy the expensive ones that can do that. But this is this is this is this this cutter is like what seven dollars. Manual cutter. So you just apply pressure, rotate, apply that, rotate, rotate, rotate. How many can you cut before you get plus? I don't know. <laughs> I only cut like 
like eight tubes. Yeah. But they, they count it spare blades. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this one more or less installed. You can see I have to do tricks here to try to get the alignment to fit. You can see the, the weird band there. So there's a lot of these things that you have to try to make the, 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 the bands align. Uh, I mean fit. Uh, yeah, more or less done. The temperature sensor again. This is the uh, yeah. how much do you bought the sensor? Oh, this sensor, if I'm not wrong, is quite cheap, it's like maybe seven bucks, seven, eight bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Sensor is not very expensive. Or maybe it's even cheaper, maybe five bucks, can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the, the outlet valve. So in it is a they call it a push pull valve. So you pull it and the water will come out. Yeah. So all these are actually just plumbing concepts. If, if you do plumbing, then I think they pretty much copy everything. They just make it look nicer, make it, uh, yeah. This is $20. Yeah, it's the pump. So I was testing pressure. I think this is dropping. Uh, I did a test run with plain water. So I, 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 I they always say that uh, you should actually put paper towels in all the parts so that it doesn't leak. But I tested it in my, the, 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 the 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 what call it? I tested with the uh pressure tester a few times everything okay so I just just went for it <laughs> yeah so so one trick you say is uh don't connect the motherboard power just the loop so even the loop leaks nothing is on so it's fine so you can actually connect just the the power that delivers to your pump and thing uh and 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 reservoir and everything else you short circuit it then you can actually get it running without having a computer on. Is there any affordable moving liquid that is not conducting electricity? Yeah, oh, affordable, no. <laughs> so you can use things like mineral oil or things like that, uh, but they are quite viscous, so you, they are not really kind of doing it. But you, you can, so there are things that, that okay, the, today, today they are, they are really interesting solutions, right, where they make it such that it almost never leak. Even if you try to slice the tube, you know, how, 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 what it does is, okay, maybe I'll cover that. Later, the other one is it's an interesting way how they do it. Yeah. So um like this, this like that up. Um yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh this is the outlet valve. Ah, this is the uh this is the the the, the coolant. Yeah. Mystic form. <laughs> it is supposed to make it like cloudy. Yeah. So this is the installed version. Um, it, so yeah, it's really, really heavy. This is 25 kilograms. Yeah, because it's all copper. The 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 G, the GPU, the GPU itself is I think it's two 2.5 kilograms. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the whole thing is copper. So all the copper pipes, all this, the weight out the radiators, all everything is copper. So all this adds, adds up. Yeah. Of, uh, you can buy aluminum fittings of everything. So, so there's something about uh, in, in, in metallurgy that uh, you cannot mix metals because uh, the ions will transfer, they will leach off each other. So if you want it to be aluminum, the entire loop has to be aluminum. If you want it to be uh, copper, the entire loop has to be copper. Yeah. So I decided to go copper out. Actually, copper is cheaper than aluminum. Yeah. So, but it's just, uh, you have to, yeah. And it's very, very, very heavy. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the sensor that I talk about. So the top one is the temperature of the water, of the coolant, the water. The middle one is the flow, how many liters per minute. The last one is the RPM of the, uh, of the I think of the sensor. Yeah, so pretty much I, I because this is mounted just at the side, I can see it. So I just actually just occasionally just glance at it and I know everything is fine. Yeah, if, if, if you see the water is not flowing, then something is wrong, or if the temperature is too high, something is wrong. Yeah. So, uh, pretty much this is uh, right. If it's idling, it's around thirty degrees. Sometimes even lower. If I turn on an aircon, it will be around twenty six degrees, 20, uh, 20, 28 degrees. So it's pretty much room temperature. Then, uh, gaming, it hits up to uh forty degrees. Uh, uh, I uh benchmarking, which I would say sometimes is an unrealistic. Uh, it may not be realistic. Uh, uh, load on the CPU is really like maximum. So benchmarking those benchmarkers stuff that it will hit like fifty five degrees for for mine. Yeah. So what, what, how fast does the flow go when you run a benchmark? 
so typically if uh if, if it's idling it goes like 0 0.7 liters a minute if i benchmark it uh it will hit probably three i think that it makes up that four yeah uh, okay so this is this this is a fully installed one <laughs> Yeah, so I I I plan to buy this huge <laughs> monitor. Yeah, so this one is the Samsung Odyssey G9. So if you have a GDX a RTX uh, 890, you need a equivalent monitor to harness and to use all the power. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, my my table spans the entire room. It's a it's a inbuilt table on the in the room. Yeah, so the the length is not an issue, but it's so this is actually this is um. Uh, 5,100 and 51120 five, one, by 1440. It's basically two, 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 two K monitors together. Yeah. I think the aspect ratio is like 21 by nine or something. Yeah. It's really, really good for productivity and work because you can really like open like four windows and everything. Yeah. And it's even better for gaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that's, 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 that's all. Yeah. How much is Questions. <laughs> you you gonna make a guess? Four thousand one four point one two zero. Yeah. <laughs> more, more than that. Oh 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 wait. Excluding the monitor, right? Excluding the monitor. Quite close. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The graphics code alone, graphics code, graphics card alone is like one point five k already. The CPU was one point two. The motherboard was like six hundred, seven hundred. Fittings, all the fittings cost a lot of money. We each fitting right cost four dollars. I bought like twenty, thirty, thirty plus forty. Yeah. So I think, uh, I think I spent around five point five k. On the CPU case, everything they explain the monitor. How much is the monitor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One for someone, okay? Yeah. You would be able to know to reduce maybe the number. Yeah, I might, I might reduce a bit, but I didn't I didn't really go over by, by quite a bit. Okay. Yeah. I, I was really, really careful. So I probably only wasted one or one or two of the fittings and then the tubes. I think I wasted one tube. That's about it. Yeah. So uh, can the cost be lower? Yes, you can. Don't go copper. A lot of things can you can save on the cost. Can it go higher? Definitely yes. <laughs> yeah. A uh, monitor was one point five k. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually okay today. If you buy the same model, this or this Odyssey, uh, this runs at uh, it's not that fast. So it runs at hundred twenty. It makes like hundred twenty meg uh uh meg uh hertz. So the the to the the Odyssey G9 today max out at two hundred and forty. That costs almost three thousand dollars today. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Any more questions? <laughs> no, no, nothing so far. Oh, yeah. Uh, then the yeah. Uh, the the the, the sound. Yeah. So I measured with a decimal meter. This is uh nothing on in my room. It was twenty two point four decibels. When it's on, is uh sorry, is it twenty six? Hey, wait, let me see. Yeah, it's twenty six when it's on. Full load. I don't have the picture here, but I think it was not much difference to twenty eight. Yeah, and pretty much you can't really hear it. Yeah. Yeah. So much the performance increase on hardware versus like AI. There's no performance <laughs> Yeah, okay, you probably can go higher in terms of overclocking, but the main difference really is, uh, I would say, uh, you can run cooler. Means you can actually overclock more if you want. Yeah, it is. You can run it at a much, much. Uh, the uh fans can run slower. It will be just more silent. So if you ask what what is the benefit of hard and cooling over traditional cooling, it is not really for performance. It is really just it's for aesthetics. Is to cool things better. You can because definitely things to run. Because typically your 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 CPU for echo CPU, uh, today's uh uh uh, 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 uh CPUs right easily run at eighty degrees. Uh, at, at, even at at uh, at uh, idle is like seventy degrees. But this for my for my idle is at maybe forty plus degrees. At load is around maybe fifty plus max. Yeah. 
So I, the benefits are, I would say, really aesthetic. And then uh, if you want silence like me, then, then yeah, that's it. Performance-wise, yes, if you are thinking about route that, since it's cooler, I can overclock more. But then overclock is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you so much.